Good day, students, and welcome to part two of the complex practice test. Our beginning in numerical skills and algebra. Uh, we're going to be going over questions eight to fourteen. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and start uh, with number number eight. <clears throat> so saying that four is less than the square root of nine is less. I mean, four is less than the square root of x is less than the square root of nine is equivalent to saying what about x? So if you notice that the question has a um, square root in it, but the options do not have a square root. Okay, so in order to get um, our question in a form, in a formulation that's similar to the alternative, we need to get rid of the square root. Okay, so the question is how do we accomplish that? So we have 4 as less than the square root of x, and that's less than 9. So in order to get rid of the square root, we need to do the opposite of root, which is square. So what we're going to do is we're going to square all three sides of the equation, okay? So we're going to square 4, we're going to square the square root of x, and we're going to square 9, okay? So when we square all those three parts, we're going to have 16 as less than, square and square, so inverses, so they cancel out as less than x, and then uh, 9 squared is 81, all right? So the answer to number 8 is B. All right, moving along uh, to question number nine. All right, so uh, question nine, it says, with what value um, of x solves for the pro proportion? Nine over six equals x over eight. So we have nine over six um, equals x over eight. So how do we do this? Uh, if I can isolate x, then I would have essentially solved for x, okay? So how do I isolate x? x has been divided by 8 here, so we need to undo this division by using the opposite operation or the inverse operation, which is multiply. So I'm going to multiply this side by 8 over 1, and multiply the right side by 8 over 1 also. All right? So uh, we have 8 times 9, which is 50. Um, so 8 times 9 is um, 72. So we have 72 over 6. On the left side, we multiply across equals on the right side, the 8 and this 8 cancel out equals x. 6 goes into 72 12 times, so you have x equals 12. All right, you can do your division with your calculator, or you can you can do it you can do it by hand. All right, so your answer is option E. All right, number 10 it says if the total cost of x apples is b cents, what is the general formula for the cost in cents of y apples? All right, so. Uh, we're just, we're just going to make two columns right here. We're going to have the um, number of apples on the left side, number of apples, and the cost in cents, okay? All right, so we're going to attempt to form a proportion here, right? So we know that x apples cost b cents. So if x apple cost b cents, then y is going to cost what? j cents. Let's call j cents, okay? It's going to cost cost j cents j cents is what we're looking for the amount of money is going to cost for y apples okay so if i can get j by itself then i'm done all right so let's so um let me just write it write a remark on the side where where j is the cost of y apples because the other the other variables have already been declared for us right x apples cost v cents that has already been declared for us and then y apples has already been declared here i'm just introducing things all right so what i'm going to do check this out i'm going to create a fraction okay i'm going to have x over y equals v over j all right so i have this proportional relationship based on uh the classification so i'm going to have x over y equals v over j uh, this proportion right here represents, this fraction on the left is, is the number of apples, and this is the price, okay? The goal here is if I can isolate J, then I'm done. So to eliminate the denominator, one approach I can use is simply cross-multiply, all right? Bottom to top, and then bottom to top, cross-multiply. So if I cross-multiply, I'm going to have XJ equals BY. <laughs> All right, so now to um, isolate J, um, all you do is divide both sides by X. So divide by X and divide by X. So 
So we're going to have J, which is a cost in cents, will become BY over X. Okay, so this is a cost for Y cents, for Y a number of uh, Y number of apples, BY over X. So the answer is, let's see, BY over X is D. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next one. Question number 11, it says on a math test, 12 students earn an A. This number is exactly 25% of students in the class. How many students are there in the class? So, um, basically, 25% um, of the total is equal to 12. Okay, so let's write this in equation form. 25% is the same thing as uh, 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 uh, multiplied by the total number times the total, let's call uh, total T. 0 0.25 um, times T equals 12. All right? So what is T going to be? What's the total? Like, let's, let's declare the variable here where, where T equals total total number of students in the class okay all right so so now to finish this up we just need to get t by itself so since 0 0.25 of t is equal to 12 then we're going to divide both sides by 0 0.25 divide this by 0 0.25 okay and then that's going to give us t the total t equals 12 divided by 0 0.25 okay so you can simply enter enter this in your calculator uh let me turn on my calculator right here enter this in the calculator and then that will give you your final answer remember calculators are allowed in the test so we can just go 12 divided by 0.25 which equals 48 okay so t um equals 48 okay all right, so the answer to number 11 is E. All right, let's move on to number 12. It says, this year, 75% of the, of the graduating class of Harriet Stillman High School had taken at least eight math courses. Of the remaining class members, 60% had taken six or seven math courses. What percent of the graduating class had taken fewer than six math courses? Okay, so... 75% have taken eight math courses. So um, let's let's declare that we here let uh, t uh, t be the total number of students. Okay, be the total number of students. Okay. So um, so 75% has taken 75%. Uh, of T have taken have taken um, eight math courses okay eight math courses so what does that mean 75% of T is basically 0 0.75 T 0 0.75 T uh, 0 0.75 T have uh, eight courses or more okay because 75 percent if you have 75 percent is 75 over 100 right so if you want to change this to decimal you take the decimal point to the denominator you move it forward twice to make that one and then the decimal point behind the 75 percent you move it forward twice because you move the bottom forward twice so it's basically going to be 0 0.75 okay so 0 0.75 is exactly the same thing as 75 percent all right so 0 0.75 T have taken eight courses. So that means the remainder, if 0 0.7, if 75% have taken eight math courses, that means 25% of T have taken less than eight, less than eight, okay? Less than eight. How do I know that? Because 100, percent minus 75 is 25 so if 75 percent have taken eight math courses that means the remaining 25 percent 
have taken less than eight. Okay, so what is the 25% of T? That's basically 0 0.25 T have uh, less than eight, less than eight. Okay. All right, now this is the first step. Now we have another layer. 60% of this population right here have six or seven math courses. Okay, so if 60% have, so 60% of the remaining, which is 0.25t, have six or seven classes, six or seven math courses. Okay. So if 60% if have six or seven math courses, then how many of them will have less than this? You just simply go 100 minus 60%. So basically 40% have less than six math courses. That's what the question asks for. It says how many people have fewer than six math courses? So since so 60% of 0.25t, let me box this one right here, because these are the ones that have less than seven. Since since 60% uh, of this um, have six to seven math courses, then how many uh, have less than six? 40%. So 40% of the remaining, 40% of this remaining 0.25t have less than six, okay? So what is 40% of 0.25? 40% is 0.4, up is multiplied again, times 0.25t. So this is the number that represents the amount of people that have less than, uh, that have less, less than six classes, okay? So we just simply multiply it with 0 0.4 times 0 0.25. Uh, so the calculators again. Uh, 0.4 times 0.25 is 0.1. So 0.1t, 0.1t have less than six classes, okay? So what is 0 0.1 in percent form? 0 0.1 is simply 0.1, you put it over one, and I wanna make the denominator 100, right? So how do I make the denominator 100? You move the decimal point backward twice, one, two, put a zero here and a zero here. Same with the top, move it back one, two. We have a zero here, which is 10 over 100, which is 10%. So 0 0.1 is 10%. So 10% of T have less than six classes, okay? All right, so basically all I did is I just kept subtracting it and that's what gave me this 10%, all right? So the final answer for this is option B. All right, uh, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, question number 13, it says, Adam tried to compute the average of his seven test scores. He mistakenly divided the correct sum of all his tests by six, which yielded 84. What is Adam's correct average test score? So for this one, uh, we need to find the total first, uh, the correct total. The correct total is simply the average multiplied by the number of scores. So basically 84 times six, okay? So let's work that out, 84 times 6, 84 times 6, we have 504, okay? So this is the total, the total is correct, okay? It's just that he divided it by the wrong number, which was 6. So the correct total is 504, so the correct average, the correct average um, requires you dividing the correct total by the correct number of students. The correct total is 504 divided by the total number of students, which is supposed to be seven, so it's 504 divided by seven, okay? So when we do 504 divided by seven, the answer is going to be 72. So 504 divided by seven is 72, and the answer is B, all right? Okay, moving along to the last question. Question four says, a total of 50 juniors and seniors were given a math test. 
35 juniors attain an average score of 80, while 15 seniors attain an average of 50. What was the average score for all students who took the test? So we need to find um, the total score for the 50 junior, uh, for the 35 juniors and the 15 seniors first, and then we're going to divide that by the total number of students, which is 50. Okay, so total score, total score for juniors, for juniors, you just simply multiply the average, uh, which is um, 80 by the total number of students. Total number of juniors so is 35 times 80. Because when you divide the total by the number, that's what gives you the average, okay? All right, so if you multiply that out, 35 times 80, 35 times 80, that gives us 2,800. So this is the total score for the juniors, 2,800. What is the total score uh, for uh, seniors? There are uh, uh, 25, 15 seniors in all, multiplied by the, their average score, which was 70. All right, and then we'll multiply that out, 15 times 17. We get um, 1050. So the total score for seniors is 1050. All right, so when we add this up, we're gonna have 3,850. This is the total score uh, for all for all 50 students okay for all 50 students we have a total score of 3850 all right so what is the average we know what the average is right average is total divided by number number um, of uh, elements divided by the total number so in this case uh, the total is 3850 and then we divide it by total number of students in this case, right? So the total number of students in all is 50. So 3850 divided by 50 will tell us what the average is. So we're going to go 3850 divided by 50, and it is 77. So the total uh, average score for the 50 students, the average score for the 50 students is 77, all right? So your answer is D. All right, uh, thanks so much for uh, paying attention to this presentation. Feel free to subscribe uh, so you can get future updates and also request videos in the comment section. More math videos can be found on math.observe.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.